Hi, welcome to Postcards from Home. I hope you're all doing okay in confinement. Uh, today I'm wearing a seconds Kitski skirt, which I mended. Um, a merino jumper that must be at least 10 years old, even longer, and actually it's so old I can't even remember where I got it from. And a silk scarf that I got recently in, um, in Sri Lanka. Uh, last week we had a look at my coats and jackets and I thought we'd jump back in there again. Um, I also had lots of comments about um, the fur coat that I pulled out last week so we'll talk about that as well. So um, about a third of my jackets are, um, are second hand and um, a couple of things I wanted to talk to, to you about today was one uh, this beautiful kimono which I was given by a girlfriend, thank you Helena, and I love it, it's this beautiful beautiful lavender colour, but I haven't been able to wear it because it's it's actually too long for me. Um, kimonos are traditionally really long and then they're belted and pulled up so that they're, um, when they're traditionally worn so they're at the right length. Um, I'm obviously not going to wear it as a traditional garment, but I'm really looking forward to wearing it as um, as a jacket as we come into into autumn. So how I'd wear it would be with just with a um, a nice wide belt, possibly not this colour, but it's just what I've got at hand. Um, a nice broad belt and tucking it all in. It's got a beautiful shawl collar and these um, gorgeous dramatic sleeves and I think it's perfect outfit for autumn. Um, it's just about 10 centimetres too long for me so what I thought I'd do is I'd just take, up, take it up from the bottom. Um, what I've been thinking about though is it's got this beautiful, beautiful lining so the lining is as gorgeous as the garment itself and the way it's been dyed um, it's dyed in the edges this gorgeous rose colour so if I take off the bottom 10 centimetres how do I do that without without losing this beautiful finish so um, that's my next project so stay stay tuned um, another garment in my wardrobe that I love to wear and it cost me less than $50 from um, from Port Chalmers second hand store again and this is a this is a, a Whanganui um, school blazer and the emblem on it is that we may have life and someone stuck a skull and crossbones <laughs> over the top which I really like and I actually wear this jacket um, reasonably often I just really really like it and for me um, I don't have a lot of green in my wardrobe but because it's an emerald green it's not a yellow green it's a sort of blue based green I can wear it and I, I just really really like this jacket makes me feel good so um, it's one of my favorite second pieces the other um, jacket that I wanted to show you is this jacket which is which was my grandfather's so this is from the 1970s it's got a lovely quilted interior um, it's past its best and I generally wear it it's, I mean, it's a really big coat for a big man um, and I wear it um, belted again and when I wear it I just feel really nurtured and comforted and it's kind of the perfect garment for a time like now and I'm wondering if any of you also um, have garments from people that that you love, that you wear, that bring you comfort as well. Now's kind of the perfect time for it. Um, what else have I got in here that you might be interested in? Um, running jackets. Uh, old faded leather jackets, second hand bomber 
bomber jackets from Recycle Boutique and a notorious fur coat. So um, some of the comments that, I, that um, I received on this, I'd just like to read out a couple of them. One was from Second Hand Matt. It says, uh, thanks for your insights and opinion on fur versus faux fur. I'll check out your link. Um, I personally am in agreement with you and also own vintage fur. As you mentioned, these coats are already in our economy and may as well be utilised. However, there's a concept I struggle with and would love your thoughts. What are your opinions on the notion that wearing fur drives faux fur demand and thus supply up? e.g. our trendsetters wearing fur even if it's vintage, keeping less expensive, more affordable faux fur alternatives in the stores. Erin. So, um, really good point Erin, thank you. Um, fur is a, is a really nuanced and complex debate, and but it's also kind of like the low hanging fruit because in terms of sustainability and animal welfare, the leather industry is of much more concern just because of the scale of it. So, um, it, fur, the fur industry is only a tiny, tiny percentage of the garments that are produced. Um, to address the animal rights issues around it, some brands put out faux fur. And it, it's brands like Stella McCartney, etc. At, at that time, um, the impacts of faux fur were not, um, were not known. So the amount of time it takes down to, to break down a landfill, which is you know up to a thousand years, which is sort of a multi-generational waste problem that we're leaving if we buy faux fur. And also the um, shedding of um, synthetic fibres. So, but now we know better, we do better. So, um, your point about in wearing vintage fur, does that drive demand for faux fur? And I, for me personally, I wear vintage fur because it's a garment already out in the market. Um, these garments are beautifully, beautifully crafted. They're around for decades, and um, and to just discard them is a terrible waste of a resource that's already putting put to market. So I wear it, and I wear it, and I talk about it. So if you're wearing your vintage fur, what you can do is talk to the people when you wear it. Talk to the people who you're with around your reasons for choosing it, why you wear it, and then we raise awareness of the issues around faux fur, and so the more we talk about our choices, the more we raise awareness, and with time, um, as the awareness of the impacts of faux fur are realised, then um, my hope would be that we'll see less of it in the market. So if you missed the previous video, uh, my recommendation if you've got faux fur in your wardrobe is to, is to bag it, is to not wear it, is to bag it and um, keep it in your wardrobe until this fibre to fibre technology is, is onshored and scaled where you'll be able to put synthetic garments into a fibre to fibre system and it takes it back to its molecular parts. Because of the shedding of faux fur, you really don't want to be wearing it. So my suggested suggestion was bag it and keep it in your wardrobe. Meanwhile, if you've got vintage fur, by all means wear vintage fur because it's already out there. It's often decades old and it will keep you warm in winter. Um, Another comment that I wanted to acknowledge was from Every Thread Counts and she said so glad to hear the near future fibre to fibre recycling. I've been overwhelmed by the textile wastage I've witnessed in Wellington just through the Vinnie's supply chain alone and Vinnie's is St Vincent de Paul's um, charity store. Um, such a loss of expensive resources to landfill, so much pollution, so much exploitation built into a system of take, make and waste. And um, she's absolutely correct. 
and a lot of regions uh, textile and clothing waste is one of the fastest growing waste stream that's grown exponentially compared to other waste streams. Um, globally we're producing well over 100 billion garments a year um, and what's driving this overconsumption is overproduction but um, what I think will happen with the virus is it's pressed pause so initially we had uh, the closure of fac factories particularly in China around the virus so um, orders went flowing through into, into brands and stores and now we've got the closure of stores so um, there's been a sudden halt to the fashion industry and I think as we emerge from um, our confinement um, the fashion industry is one of those industries that's been hugely impacted and um, we're keeping a close eye on it to see what happens. Also, with a recession coming, people won't have that spare cash to buy, um, you know, pick up clothing all the time. But also, perhaps in our staying home and being confined to home, we've also pushed pause on our expectation around consumption and just reviewing how we live. So. Um, we might see a change in, in the waste that we're seeing that's until now has been generated and that's certainly my hope. So thank you everyone for your comments, loved reading your feedback, um, love seeing the posts of everyone getting dressed up and looking glamorous even though they're still at home. Um, if you've got any questions on sustainability please fire them through them fire them through to me and I look really I really look forward to um, to hearing from you. So um, in the meantime take care and uh, go shopping in your closet and I look forward to talking to you soon.